Welcome back, you amazing German people to the channel. Hope you're all safe and sound. Merry Christmas to you, amazing people. Um, here we are with another a German video reaction, Geography Now Germany. It seems like you're enjoying these videos. Um, and also, thank you so much for all the love and comment and support. So I'm so excited. Without further ado, let's start our reaction. All right. Later, hose and schnitzel beer, bratwurst order, bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. <laughs> Those are such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. Okay, come on. Yeah. Gummy bears are delicious, better they gave me diarrhea or nuts. Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level one. Begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in Central Western Europe, bordered by nine other countries. Don't forget little Luxembourg, with small coasts on the North and Baltic Seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic which has 16 smaller states, or Bundeslande, each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun okay. side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun Why is now, that? Now we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venban Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Constance is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, um, very weird land separation. What's the reason behind it? Okay, they split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schleswig Holsteiners. Mecklenburg Pommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with. Oh my god, this is. This is whole new information for me because I used to think like the whole Germany they had like same culture and language. Um, also, I'm seeing like very interesting flags, flags of uh, different states to. Uh, the local people of those states find their pride in their flag as well. Ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms, this guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles, Napoleon comes over and messes everything up, and finally, German nationalism surges, and in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then there are all like, oh dang, we came late to this game. We gotta scramble for some colonies. Oh my god, what a roller coaster. What a roller coaster. That's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German <sighs> banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, you can kind of say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like... I had no idea Germany like colonized some countries in Africa or South America. I used to think about like England and France when about talking about like colonizing. And this is this is so interesting that uh, people in those countries they speak German. Wow like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War I, the monarchy ends, Treaty of Versailles, they lose land, Nazis come in, World War II, Germany splits in two for about 40 years, and then finally, we get the Germany we have today. East Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country, as you can still see the blocky Soviet-style buildings Ooh. sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half, and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany only accessible by train and highway. You can even wow. see from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light bulbs, whereas the West still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now, the funny oh my god, this is so interesting. I wonder what's the reason behind that. Because like after 40 years, I used to think that um, like the East Germany could blend, like they have already blended, blended with the West Germany as well. Um, very interesting. So why is what's the reason behind it? After 40 years. 
funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, wow. Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the Unminster Church, the tallest in the world, the Berlin Victory Column, and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella I'm always Castle. amazed by these castles. Has over 400 zoos, more than any other country in the world. And of course, everybody knows about the Autobahn, the highway system in which if you see this sign, it means there's no speed limit. And it's like that for a huge portion of the roadway. And no wonder, considering how vast it is. Um, somehow scary, but I wonder if you guys have so many accidents on these autobahns. Most cultivated countryside can get. Time for level two. Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mud flats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then everything just kind of creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Zugspitze, located right along the border with Austria. Kind of like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spree, Elbe, Vesa, Rhine, and of course, the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable and another third is woodland and after a millennia of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture of course happens in the North Flat Plains and the central region okay. of the country, which is by the way kind of like Europe's tornado alley. Due to its position sandwiched between the arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below, Germany can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer. There are more- Oh my god, this guy just talks so much, so many information, I need some time like to revisit this video and digest all this information. Like, take it all in. Tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Speaking of flat farmland, Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans absolutely freaking lutely love their bread. There are over 300 different kinds of bread in the country, more types than any other country in the world, oh and almost every God. meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brötchen of bread. Hast du gluten free? Nein! <laughs> I love bread. I need to taste all of those amazing breads. Are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. They basically Basically know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside schnitzels, Holladen, Sauerbraten, Schweinsachse, and at a big party you might find Spanfacher. Beer reigns supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic, even their president has no problem with public intoxication, and Austria. Oh Germany is world renowned for their beer, which by the way follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The world is continuously existing existing brewery in the world started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously and for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like- Oh my solar. god, are they built into the sea? Ah, uh, how is this even possible? Turbines and solar panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier and mountainous. The most famous one being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald in Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, As they Alcon, Bea, DHL, Bosch. Adidas! Puma! Adidas! Oh, yeah, it's kind of like the whole biscoito bolacha thing from Brazil. Remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Level three. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. <laughs> First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, oh second God. most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP. Like, is Russia part of Europe as well? I do believe that just a small portion. Is it like technically? So can you say that Russia is part of Europe as well? World. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, oh. Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africans and Americans. Also, they use the Euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the Union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. 
destination. Germany experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted, Amazing. that is mostly government-subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now, when it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsch, or High German, which is the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic-based language used along the Czech-Polish border, and Plattdeutsch, or Low German, which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas. Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, North Deutschland, Baden-Württemberg, and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, more Catholics, Carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and Middle Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They're also known Very to be kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. <laughs> then you have Bavaria, which is where the Americanized, perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, half-timber, beer houses, and cuckoo clocks. For the record, Germans are sick of those things. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. Speaking <laughs> of stereotypes, some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and so on. <laughs> Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say, I'll be the same. But in Bavarian, you would say, Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say, Tschüss. And in Rhineland, you might say, Ayus. And there's oh so God. many compound words to get really long and complicated, like Rindfleischer, Ticketierungs, Überwachungsaufgaben, Übertragungsgesetz. This is because many. Oh my God, I need therapy. <laughs> German language is so beautiful, but it's at the same time, it's so hard as well. I love German language. Words are mehrtudig, or ambiguous words that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By oh my the way, God, I word. need to check those words as well. Airworm distance. <laughs> Inner pig dog? What, what does that supposed to mean? Exterior shape, closing gate panel. Oh my god, thank you for educating me the concepts that I never thought of. For everything, like my favorite word, backpiping is it. Not this time. By the way, for the record, this letter makes a double S sound. However, spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also uh -huh. love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians, split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious, with a noticeable community of Muslims, most from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid-50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder, or economic wonder, happened to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled in- Oh my God, what they have done in 40 years is just so amazing. So, so amazing to general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities. Realschule, a middle ground type of school. And Hauptschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. Germany also has the largest music market in the EU and the third in the world after the US and Japan. They love- Wow, you Germans, you love music so much preserving their heritage and culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras mostly supported by public money, and artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewaltergung. Totally butchered that! Which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride, and unless if you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag. I can see why. Any kind of like patriotic setting. It's weird, but it's kind of how things are. You. 
monster. They've made great strides to move on from the past. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany. And they even have a rule, the Volksverzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech. Others say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. Albrecht, Dürer, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Karl Benz, Albert Einstein. So many iconic people in just one country. So many iconic in every specs and layers. Although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the U.S. and became an American. Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Shoemaker, Alex von Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <coughs> One thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can... Uh, wasn't it just like Finland or Sweden? I was checking the list, it, uh, uh, if I remember it correctly, it was most of them were like Scandinavian countries. Also, I remember that Germany was in top 10 as well. I conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. <laughs> Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War and after reunification, they were like, even better! And oh. Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad. So, uh, the reason why South Korea is like so advanced in like car industry, is it because they have learned from German people? and study and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The U.S. is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage and after World War II the Marshall Plan allowed the U.S. to give post-war aid to Germany which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Wow. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World War II which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Mm, Turkey is probably why. the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds, but since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Um, shout out to all the amazing Kurdish people. I love them so much. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina, in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France, though, is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start, but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful, flashy, spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, <laughs> although Germanic peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around, they've kind of gone through some of the most intense, world-revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet, they've come yes. out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Stay tuned. Another African state Germany has ties to... Ghana. 